Abba Father, obedience doesn't come naturally to me. I can be so stubborn and determined to have my way that I forget that your will should trump mine. Give me, Lord, an obedient heart, one that wants to serve you and glorify you in every way. Amen. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. Deuteronomy 30, 15, 16. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. Notice, not in our sight, but in the sight of the Lord. Amen. That it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers. Deuteronomy 6, 18. Keep therefore the words of this covenant, and do them that ye may prosper in all that ye do. Deuteronomy 29, 9. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he sware unto thy fathers. Deuteronomy 7, 12. Oh, that there were such an heart in them, that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Deuteronomy 5.29 You know, this verse right here, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Um, you know, a lot of times um, I think about of my own childhood, how horrible, how um, tragic, how painful of all the things that we had endured through the genocide, through the killing fields of Cambodia, you know, losing my homeland, my parents, our baby brother who was only one years old, um, you know, two millions lives lost in that Holocaust. We lost everything. And when I was younger, running through it, you know, dodging death, um, trying to escape, I wasn't realizing all this. But as I got older, and once I come into a relationship with the Lord um, Jesus Christ and was born again and start reading scriptures and understanding, you know, God's heart, God's plans, God's covenant and promises you know, of um, good and evil, blessings and curses, then I understood why I, as a child, and many other children, millions of other children, you know, that lost their lives or suffered greatly, um, like my baby brother who did not deserve to suffer and died, he was only one. But yet, because of the sin and the disobedience and the rebellion of our fathers and forefathers and forefathers, you know, our ancestors, they brought the curse upon everyone, including innocent children, such as my baby brother and myself, my brother, and millions of other um, children that, that lost their lives, not just um, in the killing fields of Cambodia, but throughout all genocides and trials and tragedies and losses in life in every nation, every little island and villages, you know, it's um, the blessings and curses of the choices that um, we make and the choices of our fathers and forefathers make, you know. Scripture is clear that, you know, the nations who forget God will be utterly destroyed. And um, I, I don't have the uh, verse reference for it, um, but I know it's in there. I've read it many times. And um, there's many other uh, scripture references that goes along with that as well. And it's very sad. So what I'm trying to say is that 
I want to make sure that my decision um, will bring blessings to my three sons and to everyone that comes into contact with me, my spouse, you know, my family, my friends, that I do not bring curses upon them, evil upon them because of the evil choices that I make against the living God. Um, he says so in his word, you know, uh, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. And also somewhere in the, the Old Testament, um, which still is true, even though it is in the Old Testament, that the, um, uh, the sins of the fathers falls down to at least four generations. Uh, it is passed down to at least four generations until somebody gets born again, repent, get born again, and forsake um, the evil, you know, of their forefathers. Then it would stop. The blood of Jesus would then um, bring blessings and life into that person's life and everyone else that comes, you know, after that person, should they make the decision to follow and obey God. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Philippians 4 9. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5 19. Therefore, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and do with them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Matthew seven twenty four twenty five. And that rock is Jesus Christ, the solid rock. He is immovable. Amen. Jesus answered and said unto them, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. John fourteen twenty three. If we love Jesus, we will keep his word, do his commandment, abide in him, and the Father and Jesus will come and live in our hearts through the Holy Spirit, and we would be in unity with them them in us and we in them amen and we know that all things work together for good to them that love god to them who are the called according to his purpose romans eight twenty eight. so regardless of what things happens in our lives whether it be um good evil um whatever all things work together for good to those who love God and those who are called according to his purposes. And I can testify that to be true and amen in my life. Master, speak. Thy servant heareth, waited for thy gracious word, longing for thy voice that cheereth. Master, let it now be heard. I am listening, Lord, for thee. What hast thou to say to me? Master, speak. Thy servant heareth. By Francis R. Havergal. That's beautiful. If ye know these things, happy are ye if you do them. John 13, 17. I believe the happiest Christians are the obedient Christians. I know for me personally, if I'm running from God and I don't want to do something that he asked me to do, like um, go apologize to somebody that, that um, I feel does not deserve my apology because they're jerks in my eyes and I really don't want to, and um, the Lord's like, you know, it's not about you. It's not about them. It's about me, as in Jesus Christ. Because he was the king of all kings. And he humbled himself so, so low. So if he can do that, we certainly can do that with other people. Whether they're in the wrong or we're in the wrong, you know, Scripture says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are sons and daughters of God. So out of my love for the Lord and wanting that peace, wanting that joy and that happiness, um, I 
have to obey. I have to surrender and I have to uh, say I'm sorry or, you know, explain myself to uh, try to uh, bridge that gap and um, restore peace. Uh, sometimes they don't want to make peace and um, that's fine too. But as long as I do it um, according to um, the will and prompting of the Holy Spirit, then I can smile and be happy and be at peace and sing and praise the Lord again. But until I do that, I'm usually restless and I don't have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding until I obey. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. John 15, 10. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. James 1, 2, 5. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. John 5, 24. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Matthew twelve fifty. That's out of the mouth of Jesus himself. You know, we belong to Jesus in the family of God. When we do the will of the Father which is in heaven, then we are sisters and brothers of Jesus Christ. And the world passes away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The only way we'll live forever is to do the will of God through faith in Christ and through the power of his Holy Spirit. 1 John 2.17 Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Matthew 7.21 let us not be deceived, you know, just knowing that there's a God somewhere and his name is Jesus and he died again and he died and rose again on the third day um, is not enough. You know, it's believing by faith, repenting of our sin and getting born again with the spirit of the living God. Because once his Holy Spirit comes to live in our heart and is the Lord of our lives, then His Holy Spirit will prompt us to want to glorify God and do the will of the Father. And those are the ones that will be in heaven. Let me read it again. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Matthew seven twenty one. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him, because we keep His commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. 1 John 3.22 There was a scripture that um, I must have skipped somewhere. Oh, here it is. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Romans 2.13 Let me read that again. This is really powerful. And I can't believe I've never seen this scripture before until today. I love it. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Hallelujah. Romans 2.13 Our Father, thou in heaven above, who biddest us to dwell in love. And to dwell in love is to remain and abide in his word, to obey his commandment, because those who love me will obey me. And that's what Jesus said. That's to dwell in love. As brethren of one family to cry in every need to thee, teach us no thoughtless words to say, but from our inmost heart to pray. Our Father, thou in heaven above, by Martin Luther. That's a beautiful poem. I pray that this word of the living God, the word of God that is life and spirit, bless you greatly as it's blessed me. And um, may we <sighs> desire above all else to not just be hearer of the word, but be doer of the word. For we are justified by doing the word, not dead faith. Amen. Faith without work is dead. 
That's what James said. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you for watching. I love you all. God bless you.